you want to talk about explosive, high-performing football, uh, Benedictine versus Morningside. Uh, Morningside, I will shamefully admit, was my preseason number one. Okay. Um, I, albeit, uh, much of a stretch because according to the NAIA, uh, they're ten, so that's what they're ranked. But um, <laughs> was really excited to see what they had going, and you know what, they did lose. But the quarterback position that we were very worried about kind of in the preseason, wondering what they had, they had like a dual quarterback system Um, on NAI F ball. We got the chance to talk to Steve Ryan, uh, the head coach over there at Morningside. Um, And he, you know, said he even took blame for the dual quarterback system, how it kind of, there wasn't a lot of rhythm to it, you know, and he fully admitted that. And he wants there to be one guy this year. And uh, Zach, and I always butcher it. It's like a, it's like a French pronunciation or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chevalier, Chevalier or something like that, you know? Um, so Zach, sorry for butchering your name, man. I'll have to, I'll have to look at the pronunciation guide for that one, but like 60 attempts in the clip at quarterback, I think you're not letting somebody throw the ball 60 times. If you don't think he could sling the rock, I think they have figured out the quarterback position also worth noting Lennox Brown, who was part of that dual quarterback system last year is now playing receiver for them. Okay. Had, uh, 11 catches for 122 yards and two toddies to his name. Uh, oh, yeah. Our buddy Zach threw for three touchdowns, albeit three picks, but also yes. 521 yards. And I'm playing the video to go alongside of it. <laughs> One of those picks gets taken back to the crib. But I, I think what you notice in watching and kind of cutting on the tape is that he was unfaltered. He did not, you know, mm-hmm. lose his touch, lose his confidence going through uh, some of those moments there. And I think that's important for a quarterback, especially if you're going to trust him to be, uh, quote unquote, the guy and you're not bouncing back and forth with two different people is you can go out and almost have like the Jameis Winston effect of, hey, he's going to throw three picks, but he's going to throw three mm-hmm. incredible touchdowns. And he's going to put up some <laughs> ridiculous numbers along the way. And, and mm-hmm. if they're okay with that, and they're okay with the kind of that high risk, high reward style of play. And obviously as the season goes on, you assume that he'll kind of hopefully dial that in a little bit. For sure. But I think too, like we need to give Benedictine a lot of credit. Their defense yep. like came through when they needed to, like obviously giving up 45 points is not ideal for any defense, but the turnover game is so important on that side of the ball being able to get three picks there. Um, and really, like, this, the name of the game for Benedictine was just staying consistent. Um, they got out to an early lead and just kept that chugging, kept slowly adding points, kept creeping up that scoreboard. And Morningside came roaring back, and they they got some points made it close, very close. Obviously, it's a three-point game. But uh, Benedictine just stayed the course after taking that early lead and really didn't let it go for the most part. Mm-hmm. And really that one pick, when you look at the box score and kind of the breakdown of the scores, Morningside had the touchdown pass to Brown and then a two-yard run from Ryan Cole. Benedictine got that pick six right there on the 41-yard return. The next two scores were Morningside there. So that broke up uh, between four Morningside scores was that interception return. That you start Mm -hmm. to look at, obviously, turnovers, like anyone will tell you turnovers are a big part of a game. That one seemingly uh, very much so in breaking up some of that scoring because of they they could have a little bit of a slide right there defensively. Absolutely. Um, And a couple other guys from this game I think are worth mentioning. Jacob uh, Gathright from uh, Benedictine with three catches for 86 yards and two touchdowns. Hey, you know, two or three of your catches are for points. That's not too bad. Dalton <laughs> Witherspoon also adding 96 yards on the ground for nine or 5.1 yards per carry. Not a bad day. Not a bad day. A lot of consistent effort around the board. A lot of guys in the backfield got touches. A lot of receivers, you know, they're spreading the ball out. It's it's efficient like you'd want it to be. Yeah. Hundred percent, man. Let's talk about another um, exciting squad. If we're ready to close the page on that one, Montana Tech, the Ore Diggers, who uh, are just been mm-hmm. exciting to play. And you talk about that conference out west there in the frontier, and and that's been one that has been. We talk about it. They cannibalize each other just about every year. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's exciting to see this Ore Digger team get out and get going against a non-conference foe. Correct. And uh, yeah. to go and, and to do that and show some of the rest of the country what this conference does to each other week in and week out. What did you see from them big time uh, 29-22 win over that really highly ranked Georgetown squad? Yeah, I mean, anytime you can knock off a, the number three team in the country, man, that is a humongous win for that program. And Montana Tech has seen the top of the mountain. Like, this is a very storied NAIA program, but my God, like, that is just, that sets the tone for the rest of your season. Um a big thing to note, I think, for Georgetown that I want to talk about first, Gary Sluniker, preseason, I had a lot of discussions with people about the quarterback position for Georgetown 
and if the offense was going to be able to be more productive because the defense was the highlight of this team last yep. year, far and away. And they obviously had running back Darius Neal to keep most of their offense going. Problem is the passing game wasn't really there. Uh, we're talking about it. You know, if they can even get that a little more efficient, they'll be doing doing all right. But Garrick Sluniker with uh, 10 completions on 21 attempts, 158 yards, a touchdown, and four interceptions is not what you want. And to add insult to injury, Darius Steele's held under 100 yards rushing, which I cannot remember the last time that happened. That dude is an absolute dog and ran for like – 1500 yards last year or something yeah. ridiculous like that so it's uh you know it's it's tough if you're georgetown but it's also a testament to georgetown that you were able to play that sloppy it's still like be in it that close with a ranked team granted you know that's real that's really a silver lining i was gonna say wanna, i don't know how much moral I, vic- how many moral victories yeah, be i don't know out of it, many... but you know it's good to, <laughs> good to mention yeah, it's good to – like, this isn't a team that's going to fall off the face yeah. of the earth. This is still a very good Georgetown team. But Montana Tech taking advantage and three of those interceptions on the day coming from Jaden Downs, Jeez. which that – I mean, being able to sniff the ball out like that is impressive. There were great defensive efforts across the NAI this week, if we're being honest. So it's uh, a dime a dozen with, with those crazy stat lines, as we'll talk about later, too, on the offensive side of the ball. But – uh yeah, it was it was a fantastic win for Montana Tech. Their defense looked great. The offense was chugging. Uh, Blake Thieland was super efficient, but Land- Landers Smith uh, at running back for Tech taking the show with 200 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, you what go to the win. final there, and I'm playing the clip now, the back corner of the end zone, that catch yep. with, I mean, mm-hmm. 12 seconds left to play, and that place erupts. Uh, the night game there, that final, 29-22, just – mayhem out there in Montana. That was very fun to watch um, seeing those clips and those things. But again, going back to, uh, to Jane Downs, he wasn't the only one on their team to uh, pick up some of those accolades. He was named, uh, well, we in the college football network, we put out our kind of our players of the week. And uh, I will say, we picked him first. It was a very easy one. The NAIA also chose him as their National Defensive Player of the Week. But uh, they had they actually swept the Frontier Conference Player of the Week awards this week. And um, him being the first and potentially the easiest of those picks. But you talked about Landers Smith already as that offensive player spot. And then Andrew uh, Almos who there on the special teams side of things. And... Uh, that's pretty good. When you can sweep the conference awards, that's uh, it's a pretty good indicator of, of what you're doing well now. Of course, that being said, how many other t- conference uh, teams played this week? You could obviously make that argument um, because you're not having yeah. like full quote-unquote participation. Uh, but when you go back and talk specifically about Jaden Browns, you said it like it's a combination of – uh, yes, obviously talent. The dude has uh, a nose for the ball, but also just right place, right time, and probably just great scheme uh, on top of yeah. all else. I mean, three interceptions, mm-hmm. four tackles to add with that, and one of those he brought back to the house. That is a stat line. He is uh, going to be really tough to live up to that one the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, but hey, I, I think he'll take it either way. <laughs> yeah, so. facts. 100%. Yep. So, yeah, no, I'm excited to, to continue to follow along with them, and I guess we can just keep going right down the, the train here. Texas Wesleyan versus number 20, Lindsey Wilson. The first game for Brad Sherrod, their head coach, who we talked about actually previously on the show, I believe like almost a month or two ago. Uh, what would you see from, from this one, and, and especially his first game at the helm for them? Yeah, first of all, I got to say I got beef with the uh, the NAI Presto Stats office with their preseason poll. <laughs> I have no – look, I understand you have a first-year head coach, but we've had the conversation about Brad that, like, this is a guy that knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you leave them out of your top 25. I know for sure whenever the next poll comes out, they will be ranked, obviously. Yeah. Um, they're a really good football team. I think they're top 15 in the country right now, and they went out against a very storied, historically fantastic Lindsey Wilson team and pretty steadily – like they they got it under control it was yep. a it was a heavyweight bout you know in the beginning that first staff was pretty back and forth second quarter they're putting up like 40 plus combined points or whatever they're doing um but man pitching a shutout against Lindsey wilson in that second half is absolutely huge if you're texas wesleyan they played a consistent game all around 
Yeah, no, that, that was probably the biggest thing. I think, again, just looking at box score, I didn't get to watch the game um, live. But when you just glance at a box score, like what are some of the things that jump out to you? And a shutout in the second half is something that jumps off a box score, especially uh, when you go into halftime so competitive. And not to say they had an offensive explosion in the second half, but they didn't need to because the other side of the ball yeah. uh, just stepped up and did their thing. So, yeah, I mean, uh, respect seems like definitely earned from that, uh, that Texas Wesleyan squad. And I guess people just more people going to be hit moving forward, I guess, to what they got going on down there. Yeah. I think we need to mention too Texas Wesleyan getting back to back pick sixes, uh, back to back drives, not back to back plays, but my goodness, that's a, that's a backbreaker. Lindsay Wilson subbed out, read it brickly pretty quickly after that. Um, also should mention that a Sholly cannon for, um, uh, excuse me, uh, Texas Wesley and having an absolute day with 14 total tackles and a tackle for loss. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's fun. Texas Wesley and team, man. I, I know everybody's worried about the first year head coach. They're returning so many people from last year. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think this is going to be a top 15 team and we'll touch on it later, but they've, they've got their work cut out for them for sure. But I think if they can survive this early slate, they'll be smooth sailing for the rest of the year. Yeah. I would agree with you a hundred percent there, and let's keep things moving and talk about this uh, this Evangel squad going in another top twenty five ranked opponent in Kansas Wesley, and they pick up that thirty five twenty four win. And uh, just talk to me about your thoughts after uh, you know reactions to this one. Yeah, um, I mean this was it was a slow start for Evangel, but once they got rolling, they really got rolling. Uh, the second and third quarter, they scored all of their points, a couple touchdowns in the second quarter, three in the third quarter, and that was pretty much good enough to carry them the entire way there. Kansas Wesleyan, you know, scored points here and there sparingly, but uh, defense for Evangel just looked really dominant. And I think, too, it's worth mentioning on the offensive side of the ball for the Valor, uh, Reed Potts to Brock Lyle. I mean, that is a connection that accounted for, you know, seven catches, 157 yards, and three touchdowns um, on the day. That is just incredible. Um, I think... Potts only completed like 10 other passes for a hundred more yards <laughs> outside of, outside of Lyle. So uh, yeah. obviously the, the chemistry there is good for them, but man, it was, it was a good day for Evangel. Uh, Kansas Wesleyan showed out on the ground in the backfield between Zarek Fuel and Luke Armstrong, but just couldn't get it done. And uh linebacker, Bradley My- Myers, excuse me, too, had a great day, 13 tackles, tackle, for, half a tackle for loss and a pass breakup uh, to make his day even better. Just, just a well-rounded win, very similar to what we saw last year from Evangel, um, dominating defense, offense, doing enough to get it done, and looking explosive at times, which is um, exciting to see for them. Uh, Kansas Wesleyan, obviously not the loss you want to have. But their roster is probably good enough, and it's early enough in the year they'll be able to rebound. They will still be around. It's Kansas Wesleyan. No reason for them not to. So it's, uh, it's a disappointing loss, but Evangel, man, they are as good as ever. 